When something is repeated, it means God wants your attention to it. But in John chapter 12, Jesus is speaking to the people and he says in verse 38, Well did Isaiah wrote, who hath believed her report? And to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? So Jesus says this, Well did Isaiah wrote, Lord, who believed our report? And to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Paul comes and he wrote the awesome faith by speaking in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 16. And he says the same thing. He says, Isaiah wrote and said, Lord, who believed our report? And to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Why would it be repeated? So the story comes out of Isaiah 53 verse 1 that says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Then it talks about a branch or a root or, you know, shall grow out, out of dry ground. And that word branch is the word naza which brings about the word Nazarene or Nazareth, which means something of no significance, but it will bring about a report that will be hard to believe. What will this report be? This report will say he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That chastisement that brings us peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. This is the report. Then in verse 17 of Romans chapter 10, Paul says, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. That scripture has been over-preached and over-preached and over-preached without the context. The context says, Can you believe the report that Isaiah gave us? What is the report? There will be somebody that will come forth and he will be called the branch. The word branch is Nazar. There will be something that will be called Jesus of Nazareth. And that name is so powerful. When Peter mentioned that name, a crippled guy that was brought out every day to the gate called Beautiful to Beg in Acts chapter 3 was healed immediately when he was challenged by the Jewish board of the Sanhedrin to say, in what name and by what authority did you heal this man? He said, let you and the whole house of Israel know by faith in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. The faith in his name has made this man whole. And then he, he quotes it again in the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10 verse 38. He says concerning Jesus of Nazareth, how God has anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Why is it that the 1946 healing revival was known by great men of God, over 2,000 evangelists in the field between 1946 and 1952? And this is how they prayed for the sick. They used to put their hands on them and said, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And they got healings, 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 healings. But somehow the name died out and people just say Jesus and they don't get results because they don't know what the report says. The report says there will be nothing left and a branch will grow out of the stem of Jesus which talks about the olive tree which talks about the anointing Romans 11 and this branch the people that hope in him will experience the same anointing the Christ is the branch which is the anointing which is Nazareth which is Nazareth okay so and if we understand the power of that name when God appeared unto Moses in Exodus chapter 6 he says more or less the following he said Moses I appear to Abram Isaac and Jacob by my name El Shaddai but I never revealed my name of power to them which is the name that will bring about my acts my signs and my wonders but today I will start revealing my Jehovah name which is my redemptive name which is the name that will talk about my acts my signs and my wonders Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 the first time we get that name they came at Marah the water was bitter and Moses had to put a tree in the water and then God said I will put no diseases on you because this is my name I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. So God has got a great name. When David was challenged by Goliath, or Goliath actually challenged the, the, the armies of Israel, David said, who are you? After Goliath said, who are you? You come to me like this, you little boy. And David says, hey, you can come with a lance, you can come with a spear, you can come with a javelin, and you can come with a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I mean, it wasn't the stones that killed him, it was the name of the Lord that killed Goliath. And how much do we still know about the name of the Lord? Hebrews chapter 2 says, I will come in the midst of the worshiping congregation and I will make known the name of the Father to the worshiping brethren. So Jesus is about to make known to us something greater than we ever had. When we come in the name of something, there's got to be power invested behind it. There's so many people that think it's a formula. They say, in the name of Jesus. And they think the way you say it has got power. You know, you know, you know. Some go, in the name of a Jesus, uh, and they put a two S uh, behind the S. Uh. 
And that's not the power, you know. You come in this area, you go to certain churches, they, it seems like they curse when they say the name of Jesus. They say, in the name of Jesus, you know. And then some would say it's Jesus, and some would scream it out, some would, you know, whisper it out. It's not how you say it. It's not how many earths you put on the turf. It's not how you shout it out. It is what do you know about this name? What relationship do you have with this whole thing? Okay? So there's power invested in the name Jesus. It go in my name. If you believe in my name, Jesus of Nazareth, which is a powerful thing, if you can understand, it talks about how he was of no form or comeliness. When we looked at him, we should not have desired him as a man because he was beaten to nothing, hanging on the cross, being made sin and sickness for us. He became nothing, but out of nothingness grew this man, which is called the branch. Zechariah 3, Zechariah 6, Isaiah 11, Isaiah 9, Isaiah, you know, all over. I will bring my servant who is called the branch. And this branch is Nazareth, which is Jesus of Nazareth. And if we hope in his name, that is the Christ, that is the anointing, that is the power, that is how God has healed the sick throughout the ages. People that can have a revelation. If you have a revelation about the name, you don't have to speak it out in words. The people that are living in the heavenly sphere, that is called demons and devils, will know you know the name. You can just look at somebody and they can be healed. You can just touch somebody and they can be healed. I mean, Peter just had a shadow that fell on the people, okay? Paul just had a cloth that was sent to people, all right? Jesus just passed them by and they just touched his clothes and they were healed. Not a word added. So if you come in the name, it's not how you speak the name. It's do the people in the spirit realm know that you have authority in that name, all right? So we're going to go to that today. So with all that in mind, let's go to the book of John. We're going to do John 1, 3, 8, 5. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through Him. Without Him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. This Word which is God. Are you all right with that? I mean, that's what it says. It says all things. So there's nothing. All things are made by this word of Almighty God. It says in this word, in the beginning was life. Now, you know all the teachings that I've taught on this. For those who don't, just get the tapes. Was life. This life was the light of men. Verse 9. There it was. The true light was then coming into the world, the genuine, the perfect, the steadfast light that illuminates every person. Keep your finger there and quickly jump to John chapter 8. Okay. There it was, the true light that was to illuminate every person. Okay. Remember Psalm 18 verse 28, 29. The Lord illuminates my light. The Lord lights my lamp. Okay, remember 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5, 6, and 7. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, like we just read here, has now shone the light of the gospel in our hearts so that we can have the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. You know, inside earthen vessels, the treasure which will prove that the excellence of the power is of God and not of us. So, God who said, Let there be light, is now illuminating my light. So I've got a spirit inside of me and God is lighting my lamp when I get born again. When my lamp is lit, in, he says, I now have the treasure of all God's power. Because in this light is life and this life is the light of men. So when God said, let light shine and shone in my heart, I now have the light of the knowledge of the glory of Almighty God, which is a treasure hidden on the inside of me, Christ in me, Colossians 1, 26 and 27, which is the hope of the glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, 8 and 9. If the princes of this world knew who the king of glory was, they would never have crucified him. For as it is written, the eye hath not seen and the ear not heard, and the, now they come up in the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those that love him. So God has prepared for you to have a treasure that must break out sometime so that your light can shine. And the minute the light shines, which is the energy force of Almighty God's life, there will be a producing of God's Holy Ghost power. Okay? So, with that in mind, 
John chapter 8, verse 12. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd and he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light, which is the life. He came into the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him, did not know him. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own, his domain, his creation, his things, the world. And they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. Verse 12, saints, but as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust and rely on his name. Okay. Everything that was made by him, through him, for him, he came to reveal himself to it and they did not recognize or receive him. But as many as did receive him, those, I just put their name, those that do receive him has got the power, has got the privilege, okay, has got the right to be called God's children. They are those who believe in His name. These people now who believe in His name, who now have the power, the right, the privilege to be called the children of God, these people now, they owe their birth neither to bloods, for those who believe in all the bloodline curses, nor to the will of the flesh, those who believe in inheritance from forefathers. They don't owe their birth to physical impulse, nor to the will of man, to that of a natural father, but to God, because they are born of God. So God says there's a group of people that didn't believe when the word that was life, which was the light, which illuminates every person when it's coming to his own, his own did not receive him. But anybody that do receive him now have the power, the privilege, the right to be called the children, as the King James would say, the sons of God, because they don't owe their birth to blood, physical impulse, natural father. No, no, no. They are now of a different kind of species. For if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he is a new creation. The old has passed totally away. The new has totally come. So in this new creation, man, we owe our birth not to where we come from so we don't have bloodline curses. We don't owe our birth to physical fathers so we don't have an inheritance of blood sugar and sugar diabetes and heart conditions because we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son now we owe our birth we owe our birth to God why because we are born of God okay other translations we discussed it last week we are born from above and the word Christ became flesh human incarnate and tabernacled, fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as an only begotten son received from his father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has priority over me. For he was before me, he takes rank above me. For he existed before I did. He has advanced before me because he is my chief. For out of his fullness. Now, now stop before we read this because we're going to get a little bit far away from religious ideas. Okay. Now verse 14 says, this word, which is God, which is God. Okay, now is flesh. He calls the word tabernacle. Pitch his tent, come and stay with men. Okay, Emmanuel type of thing. God is with us. Okay, the word which is now God is now flesh and now stayed amongst us. I hope so. This word which is now flesh and stayed amongst us has 
something, he is full of grace and truth. Right? This word, which was in the beginning with God, which is God, which made everything God said, let there be. This word, which has the life, which is the light. This word that brought about light, which is just pure Holy Ghost energy. This word, which is life, which is light, now became flesh and dwelt amongst us. But just before that, he said, if anybody now receives this word, he has now the right and the privilege and the power to be a son of God. And that man that receives this word do not owe his birth anymore to natural impulses. Because this man that receives the word is now born of God. And this word that now is received is now becoming flesh. Okay, there goes the message. And is now dwelling amongst us or in us. All right? Okay, and he is full of grace and truth. Now, let's see how many will get the message before I preach it. Verse 16, for out of his fullness, we have all received. All have to share and we were all supplied with. One grace after another. Spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. Favor upon favor. Gift heaped upon gift. For while the law was given through Moses, grace, the unearned, undeserved favor, spiritual blessing and truth came through Jesus Christ. Man, this is too much. Okay. This is too much. Is anybody getting it? Okay. All received. What did all receive? This fullness of grace. Okay, so if he is full of grace, this word, that now came into flesh. Okay, and if we are born of this word, 1 Peter 1 verse 23, he says we are born by the everlasting, uncorruptible, you know, word of God. We were not bought or bought by silver and gold, but we were bought by the precious blood of Jesus and we were born. By the word of God, the incorruptible seed. Okay, so we are born by receiving this word, which was in the beginning with God, which was God, which made everything. Everything consists and exists by him, through him, this word that was in the beginning with God. Now this word in him was life and this life was the light. So this word is light. So Jesus says, I am the light. Walk in the light and you will never walk in darkness. And if you have the light, you will have the life, which is the light. So anybody that receives this word are now enlightened with the light of the word. So the word becomes flesh and dwells. Okay. So I am born of God. So this word, which is God, which was in the beginning with God, which is God, is now residing on the inside of me. So I am now a son of God. All grace, all truth, all power that God has, God exists by, everything that God used to, 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 to create, all that abilities and power is now right on the inside of the born again people. Okay? You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Are we going to step a little bit away from religion? Okay? We're going to go into Christianity. We're going to go into spirituality. We're going to go into the awesome word of Almighty God. The uncompromised, unadulterated word. That will say what it means and means what it says. Okay, verse 18. No man has ever seen God at any time. But the only unique son, the only begotten, who is in the bosom, in the intimate presence of the Father, he has declared him. He has revealed him, brought him out where he can be seen. Come on. He has interpreted him. He has made him known. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, how many ready for a word that will rattle all your religious cages? Get you out of bondage and slavery to a law system. Get you into the grace of Almighty God where He has set you free. Walk in this freedom and liberty where with Christ has set you free. And do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. There is freedom for the children of Almighty God. Jesus says the son will always abide in the house. But the servant can't stay in the house. So I don't call you servants anymore. But I call you friends and I make you sons. So if we are the sons of God, we're supposed to dwell in the very presence of the Almighty God. Which is a light. 
life light of Almighty God. You were born again by the word. You received the word. So you are now. The word made flesh. Okay. So no one has ever seen the father. But Christ brought him out where he could be seen. He has made him known. Okay. So Jesus comes to this pool. And here's this man sitting there all his life. Whenever the water is stirred and troubled and God comes down, you know, he has no man to put him in. So Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? You know, and he said, I have no man to put me in the water. Jesus said, forget that. Get up, take your bed up and go home. Amen. Remember, the man was just got healed. And, uh, you know, so the people wants to know, why did you do that? I mean, there's other sick people. Why did you go there? Why, did you, why didn't you do it this way? Why did you do it differently? I mean, we are used to the pool. The way it's happening, the angel stirs, and the first one gets healed, that's all. Now, you come and just heal them around the pool. I mean, it's not the way we used to do it in our church. I mean, you do it a little differently. Why do you have church differently? We, use, we must first wait for the angel. Okay, I don't want to step on your toes. I'm so not going to touch on anything that you do. And maybe if God comes, he do it a little bit differently. Because he is God and everything exists by him. So he can change the order of the meeting. Okay. So Jesus answers them in chapter 5 or 17, just after the pool experience. Jesus answered them, my father has worked even until now. He has never ceased working. He is still working, and I too must be working. This made the Jews more determined than ever to kill him. Because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but he actually was speaking of God as being his own father. I mean, this religious crowd got very upset because he's not now doing stuff against their rituals. He's now even saying, God is my father. Oh no, he's going further. He equals himself with God. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, oh man, listen to this. The son is able to do nothing of himself. But he is able to do only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does is what the son does in the same way. The father dearly loves the son and discloses and shows him everything that he himself does. And he will disclose to him, let him see greater things than these, so that you may marvel and be full of wonder and astonishment. I am able to do nothing for myself, but only as I'm taught by God and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge. Because I do not seek to consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim. Verse 31, if I alone testify on my behalf, my testimony is not valid and cannot be worth anything. Verse 36, but I have as my witness something greater, weightier, higher, better than that of John. For the works that the Father has appointed me to accomplish and finish the very same works that I do and am doing are a witness and a proof that the Father has sent me. And as the Father who sent me as himself testifying concerning me, no one of you has ever given ear to his voice or seen his form. You have not heard his word. You haven't got it living in your hearts because you do not believe, hear to, trust and rely on whom he has sent. Okay, are you in John chapter 1? Remember the story. He came, but they did not receive him. But those that did receive him, he gave the power because the word is now in them. So they are born of God. So they now are the word made flesh. So they now full of grace and truth. He says, but now I'm talking to you religious crowd. He says, you didn't receive him when he came. So how do you want to understand how I can only do what he shows me and what he tells me? Okay, we're going to get to that in a minute. Verse 38, verse 39, excuse me. You search and investigate and pour over the scriptures diligently because you suppose and trust that you have eternal life through them. And these scriptures testify about me. And still you are not willing to come to me so that you might have life. I receive not glory from men. I take no man's honor. I look not for mortal fame. But I know you and recognize and understand that you have not the love of God in you. I wish we could go to 1 John 2, 3 and 4 now. Okay. Verse 43. But I, you got to get this have come in my father's name and with his power and you not do you do not receive me <laughs> but 
Usually somebody comes in his own name and his own power with no authority but himself, he will receive him and give him your approval. How is it possible for you to believe you who are content to seek and receive praise and honor and glory from one another, and yet you do not seek the praise, the honor, and the glory which is from God alone? So in the beginning, when this word was, and this word was with God, this word was God, everything was made by him, there's nothing that is there that wasn't made by this word. But this word decided to come as a light. And this light is life and this life is light. So he came to his own creation, but his own creation did not recognize and receive him. And then this word, which is life, which is light, started looking around. And anybody that would receive him, he would give the power, the privilege, the right to now become sons of God. Because they will understand that they don't owe their birth anymore to human rights. They don't owe their birth to politics. They don't owe their birth to natural descent. They don't owe their birth to physical impulses or blood. They will understand they are not born by incorruptible stuff, but they are born by the ever-living Word of God. So this Word now becomes flesh. Dwells amongst us full of grace, but to all them that receive Him, they receive the fullness of the grace. So receiving the fullness of the grace, it means you receive the fullness of the word, which is the fullness of life, which is the fullness of light. So I am now the Christ manifested in the earth. We're going to be scared for it or we're going to go for it. Okay. So he says, but you don't receive him that he has sent. So why are you doing this? How do you do this? He says, I'm here in the name of the father. No man has ever seen the father. But you know why I'm here? I'm going to make him known. You know, I'm going to show him to you. But you'll have to watch. If you're religious, you're not going to see the Father. Actually, you're not even going to hear his name. But you know how I'm here? I'm here in the name of the Father. So you see these works? You see this guy at the pool? I healed him in the name of the Father. Oh, but we didn't hear you say the name of the Father. We heard you say, do you want to get healed? And then we heard you say, take up your bed and go home. We never heard you say a name. Oh, he said, I I am here in his authority and by his power, which is all invested in his name. He sent me, so I came forth from him. So I'm in the bosom of the Father. The Father is in me and I'm in the Father. So the works that I do is not my works, it's not my words, it's not what I speak. It's Him speaking in me, it's Him doing through me. So if I say Lazarus come out, it's actually the Father speaking. It's the Father that showed me what to do. So I am making the Father known. So I don't want to run ahead of myself. So I've got to just stick to a little bit of Bible before we preach. So let's go to John chapter 7. We can do a lot of scriptures there, verse 18, 19, 20. But let's just jump to verse 28. This is just before Jesus said, if you are thirsty, you can come and drink and living water shall come out of your belly. Verse 28. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught. In other words, he he lifted his voice up a little bit louder than his normal preaching. You both know me and you know from whence I am. I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true whom you know not. But I know him for I am from him and he has sent me. Then they really sought to take him. (laughs) I I wonder if anybody can see chapter after chapter, whenever he talks about God and him being one, they always wanted to kill him. Like today. (laughs) Not much different. Verse 33. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while, and am I with you? Then I go unto him that has sent me. Chapter 8 verse 14. Jesus answered, said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, my record is true. But I know where I come from. And I know where I go. But you cannot tell me where I come. And you cannot tell me where I go. (laughs) Verse 17. It is written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one witness. My father is the other witness. This is tough stuff, man. (laughs) Then said they unto him, Where is this father of yours? Jesus said, you know me, so you don't know my father. If you had known me, you would have known the father. Okay, I thought that will hit you. These words spoke Jesus. And verse 21, I go my way now. And you shall seek me, but you shall die in your sin. Because where I go, you cannot come. The religious crowd. Verse 28. 
So Jesus added, when you lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, you will realize who I am. <laughs> and that I do nothing of myself. But I say what my Father has taught me. And he who has sent me is ever with me. My Father has not left me alone. I always do what pleases him. So Jesus said to those Jews that believed in me, If you abide in my word, my teachings, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We remember that story. Is that true? Okay, so let's jump to verse 38. I tell you the things which I have seen and learned at my father's side, and your actions reflect what you have heard and learned from your father. Jesus answered them, verse 25. I told you and you believe me not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. Verse 30. I and the father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone <laughs> I just thought somebody would get this. Every time where he said, I and the Father are one. Every time that he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Every time that he says, listen man, if I do works, it's the Father's works. If I speak, it's the Father's words. Every time, they want to kill him, man. And the Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones. Verse 32. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you want to stone me? The Jews answered, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you, being a man, make yourself God. Then Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. You want to know these works? It's the Father in me, because we are actually one. You want to understand my language? It's the Father's words. When we're going to kill you. You say, ah, why do you want to kill me? For which work? For Lazarus coming out? For the storm being stilled? For the lame walking? For the blind? For which work do you want to stone me now? They say, ah, not for the works because you make yourself equal with God. He say, okay. Okay. There's the ball. That ball is your ball. It says in your law, you are God. So... Okay, the old, old story. A big fish gets babies and it's small fish. A big cat has babies and it's small kittens. A big God has children and they are Okay, you who were dead in your trespasses, your uncircumcision of your flesh, your sinful carnal nature, God brought to life together with Christ, having freely forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled, blotted out, wiped away the handwriting of the note with its legal decrees and demands which was in force and stood against us this note with its regulations decrees and demands he set aside cleared completely out of the way by nailing it to his cross in that he disarmed principalities powers that were ranged against us made a bold display public example of them triumphing over them in it and in the cross therefore let no one sit in judgment on you in matters of what the law said. The law that accuses, judges, and say, tell you how wicked you are, how ugly you are, what a sinner you are. That's what the law does. It says, now is the judgment. I'm going to be crucified. Oh, no, you can't be. We heard that Christ will abide. How can you say you will be crucified if Christ must stay? He says, ah, you don't understand. If you don't believe in me, the Lord's going to accuse you. So he says, but if you want to receive me, this is what's going to happen when I'm crucified. I'm going to take that law that tells you how wicked it is. I'm going to cancel it. Then I'm going to blot it out. Yes! 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 
after it's been cancelled, I will blot it out. I will just blot it out. Blot it out. I will blot it out. Blot it out. I will just blot it out. I will just blot it out. Okay? Then wipe it out. Then I will set it aside. And then I will nail it to the cross. So if anybody wants to accuse you over my dead body. Scripture revealed to me just two weeks ago. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now we know verse 17 says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. We know verse 21 says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we can be the rights of God. Okay? Now listen to this. I'm going to write the whole thing out. Have you got it there? If you have the King James Bible, from which we have just written down this text, whenever something is written in italics, it means the letters are hanging over. It means the original text does not have those words in there. The translators put it in to make it sound better to the tongue. But they could have been wrong in what they have put in there. So if we read it at first glance, class, this is what we will see. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Ooh. So that everyone may receive the things done in his body. Oh, so that he has, according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad, where will you stand? Okay, just in the context that religion will read it. Don't think of what I've preached until now. Where will you stand? Guilty. 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 Paul says, I'm chief of sinners. In my body dwells nothing good. I'm wicked. But thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift, Christ Jesus. I know nothing that I've done wrong. That's more or less David being the man of the God's own heart. Here comes the prophet. He says, David, your hands are full of blood. David turns around and said, my hands are clean before you, O Lord. The prophet comes and says, David, you committed sin. You're unrighteous. He says, my righteousness are ever before me, O God. David, are you okay? No, I just know God's heart. Okay, okay, forget that. Just don't get that. If you don't want to, don't get that. You decide, are the Lord going to accuse you or what you're going to have? Okay, so let's start with reading it religiously. Brothers and sisters, every one of you will one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, and then according to what you have done in your body, uh, whether it be good or bad, uh, you're going to receive Say amen or I spit again. And then people jump up for this type of preaching. Yes, there it is. And they dance. They say, whoa. And they say, Ribishi, Ricky. I'm not joking. People get excited if people preach this type of stuff to them. Taking in consideration that Jesus said, this is now the judgment seat. I'm going to go to the cross. That'll be judgment seat. On the judgment seat, I will take the letter of the law out of the way. Completely remove it. And I will take care of principalities and powers that's coming against you with the law to try and accuse you. I will nail it to the cross and have victory over them. So who can believe this report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Okay, so are you with me? Let's quote the other one and then bring it to you. So Paul comes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says. Chapter 10, he says, uh, you know, a lot of, of, of grain makes one bread and, you know, that stuff. 
Then he comes to chapter 11, verse 23. He says, I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That in the night that the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And said, this is my body. This is my body. Broken for you. Eat it. And so put my death in remembrance. Then he took the cup and he said, take this is the New Testament in my blood. This is my blood shed for the remission of sin. Take it and every time you do, put my death in remembrance. If you do not discern that this is my body, you will die. that's why people will be sick, people will be weak, and quite enough have died. So, put it on the other side. If you can discern it's my body, You'll be strong, healthy, and have immortality. Are you here? Yes, So, look at your board. The crucified Christ is the judgment seat of Christ. So we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Behold him there. As Moses lifted up the serpent, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Okay. So that everyone may receive... So italics, go. So that everyone may receive the body. Thank you, Jesus. According to that. He has done. Whether good or bad. I'm challenging all Greek scholars and interpreters of the original text to go and look at this text in the Greek language and take all your grammar laws and just write the scripture again. It says we must all come and realize and look at the crucified Christ. And then we must, according to what he done in his body, receive and the way we take his body will decide are we going to get good or are we going to get bad. What an what a awesome shout it, brother. Shout it. What do you do with revelation knowledge? You share it with people and see so you take it. Verse 7. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. From henceforth, you know him and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that suffices us. Jesus said, Philip, I've been with you so long time. Have you not known me? Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. How do you say, show us the Father? Believe you not that I am in the Father, the Father in me? Here comes the anointing. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But he said it from chapter 1. But the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very work's sake. I'm now stepping into that room thing. Man, I feel it. I feel my legs going to that room where Christ abides forever. I feel it, man. I, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I sh do, shall he do also. Greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything, anything in my name, I will do it. I will send you the comforter, the spirit of truth. Oh, the world cannot, but you will. I will not leave you comfortless or as orphans. In that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. I am not an orphan. Can you read verse 20 and not swallow your own tongue? At that day... You shall know that I am in my Father. You are in me. I am in you. C. 
16 verse 5. He pressed an akish to Loman Groshe. Reheven the bala ghost and angre shake te by hey. Have you really got a heart to receive? Then the words that I speak, you will truly believe. And those that believe, they will see that truly this work is coming from me. Power will be released in you and the greater work you will be able to do. 16 verse 5. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said things to you, sorrowful joy, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he is come, whoa. Man. 28, I come from the Father, I come to the world, again I leave the world, I go to the Father. Oh, verse 32, I'm not alone, the Father is always with me. Oh man, verse chapter 14, if we can go back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus said, oh man, verse 23, we will come to him, I and the Father, we will abide with him. He, oh man, the words that I speak is not mine, but the Father that sent me. Oh, but when the Holy Ghost comes, He will teach you all things. Bring all things to your remembrance. All things that I have said unto you. Oh man. It's better for you that I go. Look this way. If I stay, I can only reveal the Father and I can only do what He shows and I can only say what He speaks and I can do what He wants. But if I go, you will all be light. Sons of light. You can be born of the Word and the Word can come to the flesh and wherever flesh walks with the Word in you, Christ abides. The works I do, remember, he already said in chapter 3 and 5, he's, he's going to show you greater works. The works I do, you'll do. And greater. No, it's impossible to do greater works. Is it really? Is it really? Okay. okay. I'm here, so we are three, but we are one. So don't try and work it out. I'm in the bosom of the Father and the Father is in me. Don't try and work it out. But I'm going back to the Father. So that at this moment, we are just two witnesses. I testify and the Father. But I'm going to go so that we two or three can now come together. I will be there. So I'm going to bring a bigger witness, which is weightier and more powerful. So when I go, it'll be... Biting in you and with you. Okay. So Jesus said, it's better that I go away. So Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So Jesus said, Philip, I must get it right. Now I got it from God. The secret of my works
tele dobro kotolo dobro hundu yes Show us the Father. Have you not seen me? I'm so long with you. But it's better for you that I go because then I send you the Holy Spirit. Then I and the Father and the Holy Spirit will come and abide in you. So that the works I do, you can do greater works because I go. So Philip, I want you to understand. The secret of my works is not my physical presence. It's I know where I come from and I know who's in me. So if the secret is not my physical presence, then my physical absence will not make any difference. Acts 19 says in verse 10, 11, 12, more or less the following. God wrought special miracles by the hands of the Apostle Paul so that cloths and handkerchiefs that were taken from his body were laid on the sick, they were healed, and the demons were cast out. And there were certain seven sons of this high priest called Sceva. And they were known as exorcists. So they came to this guy who had demons. So this demon-possessed guy jumped up and he said, Ah, oh, we know Jesus. Because we cried out long time ago, We know who you are. You are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One. We know Paul. But you, I call no one Allah. We don't know you. So they jumped on this guy and they ripped him apart, all seven of them. Okay. So the disciples even came to Jesus and said, You know, the demons are subject to us when we use your name. He said, Good. Don't be happy because of the demons. Be happy because of the name story. Okay. The association of your name with my name. Be happy that there's association. They realize the name thing. Be happy that your names are written. Not in the Lamb's book of life. That's not the context. The context of the Lamb's book of life is revelation. That is in the heavens. Verse 20 of chapter 9. This is Ananias just laid hands on him. He just got his eyesight back filled with the spirit. And there he goes. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue. Comma. That he is the son of God. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're running ahead of me here. Verse 22, listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. But Saul increased the more in strength, confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is Christ. It's been there all these years, but nobody's prepared to read it. Nobody's prepared to say it. Okay, I'll quote it. Saul had this revelation. So straightway he started preaching. He said, I want to preach to you power of the Christ. And that this is the Son of God. <laughs> No, 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 he said, oh, and Paul proved that this is, King James has very in there in italics, so put the very in there to make it even worse. <laughs> Prove that this is the very Christ. <laughs> so one man previously quoted it and they said, oh, he says he's Christ. That's exactly what he says. Oh, Quibus, but there will be false Christs. Oh, oh, there cannot be false 300 rand notes. Because there's no real 300 rand notes. There's no false 75 rand notes. If I come in here with a 75 rand note, you'll know it's false because there's no true one. So to have a false one, you've got to have more of the real one. Because the guy that prints the false notes only print a few at a time so that they will not be found out. So if they print two million hundred rand notes today, 
There will not be somebody that will print 2 million false 200 rand notes because they're going to be found out. But the guy with his little printing press at home pressed like 10 or so, then he flips it now and then in different cities. So to have false Christ, you must have the true ones that stands out more than the false ones. So, but Kubas, there will be false prophets. Oh, so you can't have a false one if there's not a real one. What about apostles? Oh, I saw that you got those that say they're apostles and are not. He says, because the works of apostles are wrought to my hands. Signs, wonders, miracles. If that's not there, you're not an apostle.